We love to tell you about the latest and greatest products in the construction industry, but we've all made some purchases that, well, weren't so great. Let's talk about it. I'm Kenny Kaler, Managing Editor of Pro Tool Reviews. I'm here with Clint DeBoer, Editor-in-Chief of Pro Tool Reviews, Tom Gage, our resident contractor, and today we're talking about some purchases that mm, maybe we weren't really being good stewards of the finances we had. <laughs> Is that how we're going with it? That's, that's, what we're, that's where we're going with this one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so let's just talk about some of the just really bad tools we put our hands on and, uh, and share some stories about how that went. I, I want to start with the with the Black and Decker, that auto wrench. The wrench. The auto wrench. Remember that? Yeah. Because that was like one of the first tools we had our hands on when okay. we started Pro Tool Reviews. It was an early one. It was early, and it was like two AAA batteries. <laughs> it's an adjustable <laughs> wrench with batteries. <laughs> All right. And, and now, granted, you could you could you know you manually, could manually adjust do it, it, but it was gigantic. Yeah. I mean, it was like it was so much bigger than it needed to be. So you can imagine, you're, and they had pictures, I think, of guys like under, you know, sink cabinets with this thing. Like it was so practical. And um, we should have kept that. We should have. It was. It should be behind glass. I bet some museum somewhere has it. I mean, it was epic. I mean, it wasn't rechargeable or anything. But yeah. could you use rechargeable double A's? Well, you could, I suppose. Nobody likes that because they don't work very well. They right. Just, they never. They're, they're, they're never they strong. Always drop off. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, the auto wrench. It's pretty epic tool. No bueno. No bueno. <laughs> no. Did not bueno. get a five star review from us. No, and if you open it up, like literally it was, it was, the other weird thing about it, it was a belt drive. Did you know that? Oh, inside it? Yes. I never disassembled it. So. It was a belt drive. It had a little motor and a little belt that then act, it went to the, to the, phys <laughs> it was the craziestly over designed, oh my God. bizarre tool ever. And, it, and, and Black and Decker makes some pretty cool stuff. So uh -huh. like, the company's great. This that tool was a complete, in my opinion, mess. <laughs> and you know what's funny is they probably made millions of dollars on it. Like I, you know, uh, it was just that kind of tool that you're like, yeah, yeah, no, that's that's pretty cool. You know, that uh -huh. makes sense. And then there was another tool that was same time period. Okay. That I just remember when you would go into um, Sears, it would be on end caps, and oh, it was yeah. a Sears Craftsman auto hammer. The hammer. <laughs> and so yes. same kind of thing. Like there was so much hype around this tool gift guy like it was like the gift to give to someone that you didn't know what to give them you'd give them an auto hammer. i think they sold millions oh it's brilliant oh, as far as marketing sure. that went into this yeah. thing but it's for practicality of being able to actually put a nail in well th and that's what was crazy so we tested them mm -hmm. and the and i remember distinctly that they advertised that they could drive a 16d yeah. nail you know whatever well, i don't remember the length but 16d and we tried and we tried and the, the thing was, the crazy thing was they're in the end caps, right? Right. They're right there, yeah. charged. Like, people could use them. And they would stick, like, 12 D nails or whatever. And you'd go and, and what did you see on the end cap? Not, not, na not big nails, I don't remember. No, not big nails, but what did you see of the nails that were on the Oh, they're all standing out. Like, they're, they're all were... standing out and they're all bent over. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. if you started getting off, I mean, it would just, <laughs> like, a, like a candy cane. Wait. The other thing is, too, is it was loud. It was so loud. It was deafening loud because I could only imagine if you're trying to do like joist hangers or somewhere uh -huh. in a confined space and it'd just be like you'd be going deaf yeah. with this tool. I mean, because because that and that you you have palm nailers. I mean, <laughs> right. they exist like right. it's not a bad. It makes sense, like you, especially mm -hmm. like that. You're under a deck, you're yeah. low, you got to get into a weird space. Mm -hmm. I mean, a palm nailer is kind of your best friend for putting up straps yeah. and stuff, but it's like. Did not do it a palm. This did not do it. <laughs> and but you looked at it and you're like, it should because uh -huh. it's like a palm nailer with a handle. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You could get it up in there without having, you know, in a hammer you got to swing. So you're thinking, oh, this thing you just stick it there. I'm pretty sure I sent one to my dad. Just everybody because. sent one to the. I'm almost positive I sent one to my dad. Like everybody <laughs> sent these were like it was the Christmas gift of that year. They were flying off the shelves. I'm telling you. And then when you well, actually I think some other companies like, even picked up on it. And I think there was other iteration. One called the Hammerhead. Yeah. At one Something, point. Yeah. yeah I mean, was, yeah. but they're gone now. I, I, I haven't they're, seen I one don't in think, a well, decade, probably. Work, so, yeah. What, one of my favorites was the uh, the dual saw reciprocating saw. And this showed up right as we were doing a heavy duty reciprocating saw sheet. I corded one. So we've got Milwaukee Super Sawzall. We've got Makita's big recip saw that's got the AVT built into it. And then we've got this thing. Yep. Okay. Now, there are some quirks. It uses two blades. Yep. 
So you got to remove twice the material. Right. Right. And it's got a 12 amp motor. 10. 10 amp. 10 amp? It was it 12? Oh, was it 10? Yeah. I thought it was 12. Well, okay. maybe, one, maybe they had two models. So I, I saw e either way, yeah. we're removing more material with less power than most of these heavy, but they swore it was for pros. And, and beyond that, it didn't just have a soft start. It had a gentle floating cloud on a summer day start. It took so <laughs> long to accelerate. And then my favorite part of the whole thing was that it had an LED light. Now, it's a corded tool. Uh -huh. LED light. The LED light needed four coin cell batteries <laughs> to run the light. It's like, wait, what? you don't have enough juice coming from the cord to... Look, man, they had to put all that power into the saw. <laughs> you don't want to waste that power on an LED light. Yeah. Now, you could run it with one blade if you wanted to. It could even take a regular reciprocating saw blade if you wanted it to. But it was just like What's one of those where it's like... Uh, That's a lot of work went into that thing. The crazy mm -hmm. thing, so that and that came off of the dual saw, circular saw. Like, yeah. in other words, that was like there, kind of their big, there, yep. and that one, you know, there was Billy Mays on that one. I mean, they were like, well, that was a late night. I miss that Billy was like Mays. a seen on TV yeah. kind of thing you'd see. It they were night cutting night. cars in half. I mean, they were, you know, they were doing some major. Like that was a that was a pretty fun looking, uh -huh. crazy looking tool. So they were like, hey, we could do this with recip saws. To their credit. It was one of the lowest vibration oh, no saws doubt. out there because it, every action had a complete perfect opposite reaction, yep. and so it didn't vibrate much. It's just you had to cut twice as much material with a lower powered saw. So you're taking three times as long to make the cut. Yeah, we almost begged them, and we were like, this, this not really, like, it's, it's not really like for pros, right? I mean, like, you know, it's, you, I mean, pros could use it, but it's really more of a DIY. No. Oh, no, no, no. no, no. This is a pro tool. Yeah. So, okay. All right. This what else you got? About it. Um, so when the patent expired on multi-tools, mm -hmm. and okay. everybody made multi-tools, yeah. another person hit the market, though. It wasn't quite as good. And it was Harbor Freight's Chicago Electric brand. Oh. And so we, when we were getting all these in, we were getting all, and they start, kind of started corded, right? Uh -huh. All of them were corded, then they went cordless. And, then, and I remember that one, and it was like, Somebody just slapped a motor on with a thing, and it was it. You turned it on, and it sounded like a vacuum cleaner, mm -hmm. and it vibrated super like a monster. Loud. It vibrated it in your hands so bad. Vibrate your teeth out. Yeah, it was. I'm such pretty a sure weird when we tool. were cleaning the shop last week, it came down here from upstairs in the box. It um, did not. It had a lot of dust on it. Part of me almost wishes we'd have kept it for posterity. Again, we need just, wait, we so, just need a wait, glass. Wait, wait, wait. Who did we bless that with? We I think we gave. I bet Jimmy got that at the Florida Baptist Children's Home. He's Jimmy, gonna, I'm so sorry. You're welcome. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna give that to. <laughs> maybe, maybe that'll be one of the tools he passes off to someone else. It's probably know. faster than chewing on something, though. It I mean, if you had to like chew your way through, probably faster than chewing on something. Yeah, but it was really, it was like, it was the noise, it was the vibration, because so many other people were doing it really well, and, and you were, it was Dremel, not It was not, not a tool free blade change. You actually no, had but to. nobody in the beginning really had that. Uh -huh. It was, you know, that again. Fine kept pioneering that. Well, you stuff. talk about that too. I mean, slightly off topic with this, but you think about it like the early days of the multi tools and everyone had their own blade system. Oh, yeah. right. That was disastrous. Oh, my God. And then because Bosch you bought, kinda, Yeah, they, they came out with the do. OIS adapter. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then that was like, oh, wow, now I can fit Milwaukee blades on my Bosch or mm -hmm. vice versa. And Milwaukee but wasn't even. It was a anything. period of time for probably several years where, you know, if you had bought one brand of tool, you had, to buy, their you had to buy their blades, and then when they were out of stock at the store, you were out were of luck. Stuck. And mm -hmm. you had ones like uh, Porter Cable and later DeWalt that had the clamp, mm -hmm. so they would only take the ones with the open ones back with on the them. Open, yeah. yeah, they had to have a slot. So there was a really ugly yeah. time, I feel like. Yeah, it was where, kind of weird. <laughs> it was a, a weird difficult. period of history where if you wanted that tool, and everybody who saw that tool wanted that tool, right. and they had been around. Yeah. But nobody, it was kind of like they weren't, they were so expensive. But no, know. remember how it was. I, wasn't it Fine or Festool? That fine. Ha, fine. Yeah. And they had it for years, and you see it patent. on late night shows. Like, and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. when their patent Solid. expired, everybody, everybody within three months already had their tool out with their own blade system yeah, they, and everything. They just started piling on and, and doing them. And, and now I've got some phenomenal ones. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my it's goodness. Amazing. They're great. Yeah. Hey, you remember when we were doing that massive drill shootout a while ago and we decided to include an Amazon brand in there? Yeah. We, we ordered this, uh, it was called Avid. And we were just like, yeah, let's see what this $30, $40 drill will do. Maybe there's some good stuff on here. And how long did it last? I don't, you know, I don't even know if it got through like the initial bit of testing. Like I when I was doing it, our initial weigh-in and yeah. torque testing and initial bit of things that I do to check the tools. I think it broke the second time we used it. Yeah. 
Yeah, just the, the chuck just sheared right, the screw holding and chuck on just sheared right off. Yeah. And, there, and it wasn't, and we were not holding. abusing that tool. No, we were just very gentle. It was a twist bit that we were using on it. That, that kind of brings back a tool that's not for sale, but that's something we've invented here at the shop. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're uh -oh. going with this. That when we were trying to figure out how do we do uh -huh. soft torque testing on our, our drills, and um, we used a coil spring from a Ford Ranger, and we mm -hmm. built this contraption that we could compress the spring. Mm -hmm. And I remember having it connected to the bench and the vise and it yep. coming unglued one day. And I'm glad I had put little safety bolts on it because I think you guys heard it oh, pop yeah, we from heard inside it. the office. <laughs> and uh, and also I wore safety glasses, which is, uh -huh. is a good thing yeah. on that day. Um, also but, needed a Kevlar vest apparently. Yeah, <laughs> that, that tool I would recommend is not a, not a smart. You know, that it was interesting because you know, we were always trying to figure out how can we engineer something that will help us communicate how tools compare in terms of power, speed, whatever it is that we're doing. And that one conceptually should have worked. I mean, it was it was a consistent test. It wasn't going to tell you the same torque specs everybody else got, but it was repeatable. But then we discovered that with so many brushless tools on the market, they were actually reacting to the increased resistance and stopping out of protection rather than going as far as they could. And Hilti ended up winning because it was the only brush tool in the That's test. Right. And that, that Hilti hammered that thing down. It, it, it was, was like, we're not stopping. Press yeah. that spring. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't know how many hundreds of pounds that spring would support, but it would completely <laughs> compress that thing. Out. I mean, it was like, when it was compressed, you're like, Oh gosh, that's scary. <laughs> stand to the side, stand to the side. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah we, we don't use that one anymore. No, that was one of our ideas. Uh, it was and it's of, not for sale. It's a, it's not for sale. <laughs> oh my gosh. The stubby hammer. Oh, what are those even for? I, I gotta admit though, I never bought one. I can just look at them and, and I, I mean, if, if the rule is that you gotta have bought it, I'm just not that dumb. It's a hammer that's this big. Your hand covers most of the handle, uh -huh. and they and it got it's it's got a curve like as if you're going to pry a nail up with it, you know. I, and then it's got it. I mean, some of them come with like magnets for. I think you had one of these. No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like I remember coming over to your house. I mean, this is a long time ago, but you had this like flowered tool that's set. That's different. But I'm pretty sure it had like this that little hammer. That was a separate set of awful. But but it had a little hammer. It did, but it was an Alice hammer. It was like a it was like a little tiny. I just you know, remember just, flour. It was, like a, it was like a kid's hammer or something. I remember like a utility knife, a hammer, screwdriver, all with like floral patterns on them. Yes. So, okay. So there's a story behind that. Okay. They're I had a set power? of flowered pattern tools because, mm -hmm. this, this is a good reason, because I was, I was actually at the time helping someone put these products in. I was doing some, some kind of media prep and stuff like that, and they were trying to put these products, these awful products, in either Sam's or Costco. I can't remember which. Mm -hmm. And they were the most just awful, humiliating, condescending tools you can imagine. They were like these pink and purple flower pattern. I mean, there was like a hammer. There was a utility knife. There was like a tape measure. A, I think a wrench, like a, just a standard wrench. And I'm it was like. Pretty sure you still have some of these. No. I think they pop up over in no, the house. No, no. Are you sure? Yes. I'm positive. You know, if you actually have a good reason uh, for having those tools, you don't have to tell people it's a good reason. You just tell them and they know it's a good reason. So I think what you're trying to do is justify not a good reason to own these I, tools. There's no good reason to own these okay. tools. Okay, thank horrible, you for finally admitting that. Horrible them. tools. They did, but they were at my house for a while. <laughs> so it was kind of like that thing that you hope your friends don't see, and then uh -huh. they'll be like, "Hey, well, I need this." Oh yeah, it's in the closet. And they'd open it up and be like, "Hey, you, you know, you got some flower tools in here. Like, what's up with that?" Yeah, yeah. Well, let's shift gears for a second. All right, so. You know, we weren't always as good at what we do as we are today. And we all had to start somewhere. You didn't come out of the womb with an impact driver in one hand and a drill in the other Tom saying, get, Tom might have. Other that's, than that's Tom. True. That's very true. <laughs> but we had, we had to learn. So I want to hear, you know, just one of the dumbest things you ever did that you thought you were being clever instead of using the right tool. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll start off. So we had an old bass boat, right? And plywood deck, marine plywood, uh, not modern times at all. And you know, the wood started to rot, so I decided to do my dad a favor, and I ripped the carpet out and the plywood out, put some new, new wood in there. And the, the seat has to actually have a hole in the plywood so the stem can go through, and then you bolt it down around where it actually sits on there. Yeah. Well, I didn't even know what a hole saw was, much less 
have one at the house. So I you know, drew my circle on where I needed to cut the hole and all that jazz, and I just took a drill bit and <laughs> <laughs> all the way around. <laughs> it was nowhere near the right size by the time it was done. It was definitely too big. You know, I got the bolts in and all That's that, great. and it was semi stable. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I look back every time I think about that, I'm just like, oh man, I'm glad nobody has a picture of that. For me, it was the deck on the back of our house. Okay. <clears throat> And there was this product out called uh, Tiger Claw. Tiger and they Claw. made a dedicated nailer. Remember this? Uh -huh. They made a dedicated nailer for installing basically the, um, the anchor, you know, the brackets that would automatically space out your, your deck boards okay. <clears throat> and grab into the grooves. So, you know, you could, you could really kind of, in a sense, shoot these things in and, and be kind of off to the races. Mm -hmm. Problem is, they were made for composite decks. Right. Uh, and you use... and composite decking was like twenty four bucks a board and versus like six dollars a board versus like six dollars for five uh -huh. quarter five four so it was like I was like oh, I'm just gonna use this on pressure tree lumber and it'll be fine you know like a year later I don't even think it was a year it I was, think even it was a year. like two months later I, I think mean, the boards went those boards just are like, you know they do what they do they shrink uh -huh. and it just popping up all over the place so I ended up having to redo the entire deck what cool just, tool you didn't you Wrong didn't just silicone between them. Like make just, it look like a just put some caulk, some Alex in there. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Some, or some dark. I mean, yeah, yeah. it works on anything that's less than a one foot gap, right? Yeah, you could caulk it. it. Yeah, if you could step. My brother in law says you, you, if you can step over it, you can caulk it, right? There you go. Just, I like it. So. Good job, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of funny because growing up, watching my dad work in the shop in our house, um, he was kind of guy that rather than paying someone to fix something. He looked at it as an opportunity to buy another tool. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Save money, not yeah, so much. No, what do you mean? But you, I learned a lot. So I saw him always doing things. And there was times, though, when we didn't have the right tools. Mm -hmm. um, I just, we did a lot of mechanic type work. And um, a lot of times your half inch ratchet became a hammer. Yep. You know? And so <laughs> uh, I have an old half inch Craftsman ratchet that all of the chrome is busted off of the top mm -hmm. of the head on it because it was also a hammer all the time. And growing up, we didn't have a breaker bar, so we'd always had steel pipes mm -hmm. of different lengths that you'd put over the end of your ratchet mm -hmm. to make oh, it into a breaker bar. Sure. So all of a sudden, your, you know, rat, your half-inch ratchet's about that long. Well, you put a three-foot pipe on it, mm -hmm. you get a lot of leverage. Oh, yeah. But yeah. the problem is, is ratchets weren't designed for that. Well, so you'll, we had broken ratchets too. So the great thing with Craftsman growing up was, is, and this is what I was, I was taught early <laughs> on, is that you always buy Craftsman tools for one reason. Because you can take, you them, take, you back. Can take them back. <laughs> and so, you know, in, in, in the early days too, we didn't have, uh, we, we didn't have impact rated sockets, the right. black ones. We just had our regular sockets. Right. Well, I remember with our first impact wrench, a pneumatic one, I think it was an Ingersoll Rand, we were so excited because we're like, now you can pop off wheels really fast. I mean, mm -hmm. just those lug nuts. Those chrome sockets don't hold up. Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah, they'll, they'll shatter. So you did, you did experience <laughs> so, that, yeah. You're the so, reason that there's a disclaimer on those things. <laughs> yeah. But Craftsman would take them back. You'd take the socket back and it'd be like the whole side busted open on it and they'd be like, well, what were you doing there? Like, Pfft. The bolt was stuck. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. So, Ladies and gentlemen, they'd be like, go, go, go <laughs> find another one. And I remember I was, I was heartbroken when our local Sears closed because I was like, where do we go? What do we, we go? What, what do we, we do, do when I break my tools when I'm not using them <laughs> properly? Because the other one is screwdrivers. I mean, everyone knows a flat blade screwdriver is also a chisel. I mean, that's just common It's sense. a given, right? Yeah. I mean, you hit the end of the screwdriver and you can pop things out, break Some things apart. Some companies even put metal on the back of them now and they're just like, well, fine, yeah, it's a chisel. It's a chisel. <laughs> so, I mean, and again, we so utilize that warranty from, from Craftsman. Mm -hmm. um, and, and looking back, probably a majority of the reasons we utilize it so much is because we never used the tools in the way that they were designed to be used. And we've learned over time now that so actually So you're the reason tools. Sears shut down. Uh, no. But it's I really did. your fault, ladies and gentlemen. So recently, though, I did try the, the warranty, though, and it still works at Lowe's. Wow. Because I had two broken screwdrivers. And they took them? They did. And they gave you new ones? They did. Wow. And these were old, old screwdrivers from probably 20 years ago. But well, they said Craftsman on. Wow. So, but All I've gotten right. better. Still going. I, I don't use my, my half-inch ratchet as a hammer. I've got chisels if you need to borrow chisels. So. It's good to know. Yeah. But 
<laughs> they're, they're used, but used I've got tool. wood chisels. Oh. And I've got like demo kind of chisels. Okay. So just we'll but, keep those separate. But in the middle of a project, maybe you don't have enough time to go over there. You're just like, I just need to get that thing. <laughs> so don't ever like, touch my wood chisels, and we're good. We're fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Keep your hands off Clint's wood chisels. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so let's end this thing on a positive note, all right? So I want to know what tool have you gone out and bought, and you were kind of like maybe, eh, you yeah, know, whatever, but then you discovered you use this thing all the time. I, I got one, Stiletto Titanium Hammer and Pry Bars. Okay. And it was a tool that I was like, wow, this is, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but when I started using the titanium tools, I was sold. Like, you, you walk around with a tool belt, and we're framing houses, we're doing trim work, we're doing a lot, of, you're carrying a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And when you're swinging a hammer a lot too, I just, I fell in love with the titanium tools. And so for me, it was one of those products that was like, hmm, it hurt the pocketbook a little bit for that initial purchase. Mm -hmm. But I think I've replaced the handle twice now on my titanium hammer, just because I've, I've used it so much that I've, yeah. I've probably pried things I shouldn't have pried, but the, the actual hammer head has held up amazingly well. Mm -hmm. I, I was just talking to Gregory Mills the other day about this, mm -hmm. and he does a lot of our woodworking stuff now. And and he he same thing. He's a complete advocate for using titanium hammers, and um, and he said the same thing that, that I mean he feels the same way. He's like it may cost you well over a hundred dollars. Yep, mm -hmm. worth it. That's less than a trip to the doctor to deal with you know repetitive That's stress nice. industries or any of those things that you mm -hmm. can get. I mean, if you're doing it for a living. Or if you're just doing it frequently, I yeah. mean, a titanium hammer is like a no-brainer. For me, it's cordless grease guns. <clears throat> really? Yeah, I would have never gone out and bought a cordless grease gun uh, just to have one because it seems like, uh, you know, it doesn't take that much to grease the trailer tires, to grease up the, the zerts on the, on the boat and that kind of stuff. But when I got one in my hands, mm. and then it, then it was not, oh, I only have these things to do, it was like, Hey, I know you've got heavy equipment that you got to work on. Try this, you know. And you're, you're letting your friends borrow it, and they're getting out. And by the time it's all said, I was like, man, cordless grease gun. Everybody's got them now too. Kenny's like, going to the neighbor's house. He's like greasing up. He's their greasing fittings. up everything. He's right, like, like what else can I grease? What are you doing? Absolutely, there's marine grease on my French doors. <laughs> <laughs> it's just everything. But yeah, that that was a surprising one to me. It was like, this will be nice. And then I was like, no, this is fantastic. Yeah, for, for me, it was just simple. <laughs> I, I always. There's always stuff that I need to do that involves a knife. Hmm. And so pocket knives are one thing and all that. And I used to always use my pocket I know where you're going. Alpha. <laughs> I, the the break, yes. And Alpha, you know, when I, when I got a hold, finally it was like, oh, segmented, you know, 25 mm -hmm. millimeter knife, you yeah. know, with, with, and you can get the durable blades that yeah. don't break, you know, they're not real bendy and break. They're really durable. I mean, we're just constantly tearing down boxes, but even before mm -hmm. this stuff, I've just always had a need for a, a good solid blade. And the fact that I can just kind of use it, not have to worry about it, snap it off. You know how good mm -hmm. I am about sharpening knives too, right? You're so, terrible. Yes, I'm mean, awful at sharpening knives. You abuse your knives. Yes. You should not be allowed to own a knife. So Alpha has Other than saved Alpha. me. That's the yes. only knife you should have. Yes. Do they, make, just, do they make pocket they knives make, yet? They need to make a folding, you know, utility snap off or something. But anyway, maybe they do. Yeah. I don't know. That's some good stuff. These are great stories. So if you've got some great stories about tools you love or the worst tools you've ever bought, let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Help us out by subscribing to our channel below. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit that like button and turn on notifications to stay up to date on our latest videos.